Hello Windows Store app developers. This week I'd like to share with you an image manipulation sample that I wrote. It combines gesture manipulation, crop resizing, and a bunch of other stuff I think you'll find interesting. Let's take a look, shall we? So here we are in Visual Studio 2013. We'll launch and play around with this. So you can see you can select the image, you can move it around, if I had a touch enabled monitor here, you, you could pinch and zoom or rotate it using gestures or mouse like this. Zoom in, zoom out, rotate it. Uh, you can even apply grayscale. Thanks to uh, Jeff Sanders for help with that. And you can select the corners of your crop area and resize it like this. Notice I'm only uh, doing it with one corner, and the other corner corresponds to it. And then from the app bar here, you can save, you can open up another image, you can even share out whatever um, that you've cropped here. See, there you go. You could even save that as a file if you want. Okay, so let's take a look at the code behind this. Here is the XAML page. And there's a few things going on here. Of course, we're using the new render target bitmap that's new to Windows 8.1. And we have this grid and a canvas and a canvas clip. So, unlike in WPF, in Windows Store apps, when you render an element that has a child element crossing its borders, your render target bitmap gets bigger. So you have to use this combination of the clip property and then adding an additional outer element, like a grid here in this case, to the visual tree, and that then contains your clipped element. So then when we render that outer grid, it's fine. It doesn't get larger. Just a little bit different. Here's the corners. And you'll notice that we're binding only to the top left and bottom right corner. Because when you move any of the four, the other one corresponds to it. So actually, there's only two points that we need to know about. I'm also using a converter to determine whether the, the selector for the crop area is visible or not. And here's the corners. And I have the underlying model that has all of these properties on it. it is editing clip area, top left corner canvas left. And this that underlying model implements I notify property changed. Here it is. I notify property changed. There's a Boolean determining whether we're editing the, cr the uh, crop area or not. Here's the corners. Yeah, so there's just the left and top properties for those two corners. Here's where I'm sharing the image. And we're using the gesture recognizer. So this uh, gives us a, a collection of input handlers for varying, you know, processing various pointer and gesture events. We have two of them, one for the image and then one for the crop area. And here I'm setting the data context to my model. There's my gesture recognizer. So one is the manipulation input processor. That is for the underlying image. And the other one is for the corners. So here's the image. Move it around. And then when we 
click on one of the corners here, it sets it into editing mode, clip area editing mode. So then the, uh, the selectors here become visible and you can move around the, the crop area instead of interacting with the underlying image. And the movement of the corners is done through that corner gesture recognizer. Corner manipulation uh, input processor. So this is first checking, is editing clip area? So are we editing the clip area or not? And that's based on the underlying model. So if, if we're not editing the clip area, then we'll just exit out of here and let the, the clip area gesture uh, recognizer do its, its thing. There's the pointer moved. Here we're looking at the corner type and we're processing the actual manipulation. So what we're doing is we're actually setting the property on the underlying model. Either the top left corner or the bottom right corner. Remember those are the two that we have in our underlying model and then we're using binding by implementing I notify property changed event and the UI is reflected based on that change. Okay, so here this this method is determining whether the pointer event is within the corner of the clip area. So if the user is tapping anywhere else, we're going to turn off editing of the crop area. But if they're near the corner, then we want to show the selector and then allow them to manipulate the, the clip area. So for example, here, if we're doing some event out here, we want to interact with the picture. But when we click on the corner like this, we want to go into editing mode for the crop area. Here's the corners. And this is the method that's figuring that out. It's actually in this image helper. I have a, um, a method here that determines if if the point from the, the point of pressed event is within the circle of any of those corners. Just doing a little bit of algebra here. And there we're saving the render target to a file. So if it's outside of one of those corners, then we want to turn off the is editing clip area mode <clears throat> so they can go back to regular image manipulation. On pointer released. And here we're doing the transforms for the image manipulation. Uh, we have rotation scale, or they can move the image around, translate X, translate Y. And here we're rotating. This is for the app bar button, like if they're, they're doing rotate from the app bar button, just add one to the rotate uh, delta. That's how we can get the rotation from the app bar. And similarly here we're doing the zoom. So you can zoom in, zoom out from the app bar. 
and here we're setting location, so moving the image around. Here's the enum for the corner type. Here we're centering the actual image. So as you're initially loading, we want it to show up in the in the center there. Here we're responding to the app bar buttons. And here we're doing the grayscale. So Jeff Sanders and I were on the same dispatch and we worked on different parts of this together. He helped me out a lot with this. Here's the pixel. We're setting it grayscale. Doing the offset. And opening the image. Saving it to disk. We should probably look at this. So remember that the render target bitmap renders any UI element, well almost any of you, not, not a media element with a video for example, there are certain limitations, but it renders what's in the visual tree. So here we have a, an interesting problem, right? Because we only want the cropped area, so I can't just render that cropped rectangle because it's actually sitting on top of the underlying image. That isn't in the visual tree. So instead, we're getting the entire grid, the outer image, and then we're manually doing a crop of that to get the internal cropped area. A render target bitmap of, of the uh, rectangle that represents the crop area gives nothing. All right, so if I go in here and I look at the... Uh, um, so, for, okay, this clip area is dealing with that problem that I ex explained earlier where the render target bitmap in Windows Store apps uh, gets larger. So you have to do a clip area and then an outer grid. Uh, that's, that's one part of the problem. But the actual image that we're taking is that outer grid. If we tried to get the, the rectangle of just the crop area, it's empty. Why? There's nothing in the visual tree. And here we're doing the actual cropping. So we need the start X, start Y, and the width and height of the crop area. And that's where we're going to just take those particular pixels. So yeah, two things going on here. We've got that clip, which helps with the difference between WPF and Windows Store apps, the way the render target bitmap works. And then we have the outer non-select region here. That's just applying that black overlay with the uh, opacity to indicate that that will not be in the final image. Right. And then we're doing the render target bitmap of that. Here we're figuring out the start X, start Y, and then the width and height of the clip area. And that's what we want in the end result here. And we're using an in-memory random access stream, getting the pixel data. For Windows 8.1, we added stream dot as random access stream extension. It helps you to convert from an IO stream to a storage stream. Our application synchronously requests pixel data using the detach pixel data. That gets the raw pixel data of the bitmap. And here we're sharing it. Creating it from a stream. You know, the render target bitmap class directly inherits from image source, so you can actually just assign the source property of any image element defined in your UI. It's pretty useful. And we're 
initializing the screen clip area here. We have to set it to the uh, window current width and height. We're initializing. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, please download the sample and, and walk through it and learn from it. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please join us next time.